hold on to every fucking lesson. That desperation to get the fuck out of the office, you will never get that again once you go full time. There is something to be said about being tired, being stressed, just waiting all for like I'm getting choked up just talking about it. I'm There's, choking up now. <laughs> there is something to be said about just wanting to do nothing more than going home on the dog, pursuing your career while you're doing something that you know is not benefiting your fucking life. And I miss it. I was I would never go back to a full-time job. No fucking way. But there are lessons to be learned. So fucking pay attention. Look around you. Pay attention to the work ethic. I mean, my old job, I hated it, but it taught me a lot. I mean, there's days where I've clocked in 16, 17 hours just, just on this shit alone, not even working full-time, like just going full-time on music. And if it wasn't for all the amount of work I had to put in working full-time and trying to pursue music, I wouldn't be able to hang. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So definitely pay attention to the discipline, you know, take it as an opportunity to be like, this is my bread and butter for my real life, but this is also the bread and butter to pursue my career. You know, they, there is no plan B or plan A. FBI. been a year pretty much since we last had you right yeah, it felt it feels like a long time ago it feels like way longer i think it was like november something right i can't tell if it was last year or two years ago i think it was around this time last year but i can't really remember can't it remember. was in partner when we were doing like that collab with scan tracks the heart style yeah. label remember yeah oh yeah, yeah we were reviewing that. some heart style tracks and getting yeah. some reactions out of it i remember that yeah yeah no, this is fun too, because I feel like in that time, both of us have just grown, like we're in completely different spots and we have yeah. completely different outlooks on the industry and everything. No, it's been sick. I mean, you're right. hundred percent. The growth on both platforms. I mean, you guys are blowing up any event. There's dubstep FBI. You guys get the coverage <laughs> everywhere. Seriously. I mean, like, what was it last weekend? There was like three things going on, whether it was Thunderdome or Wobble Land or whatever. You guys had coverage everywhere. So it's like you mm -hmm. guys are all over the country. Sick. We're always listening. It's funny because <laughs> people think that Yessie and I go to every event we post about yeah. and they're like, oh, like, how was Trilogy this past weekend? And I was like, wait, what? Like, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Who did you talk to? I almost second guessed myself when I was like, I hope y'all had fun at Decadence. I was like, I don't actually know if you guys were actually there right? or if somebody else was from the team, <laughs> but I, it looked like you were there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, and then it's like a lot of times. So we've been partnering up with promoters too to kind of like help throw events and promote them like on the pre side of things. And a lot of times they're like, oh, you should come out to our event and we'll have the dubs of FBI there arresting people. And like, as much as we want to go to every single event, it's just like, it's just not doable, you know? How, uh, how big is the team now? Oh man, 25, 30? Yeah. yeah, I thought it was, it's pretty massive. You guys get coverage like a lot of different places, so. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, because we have like the core street team of 20 and that's, yeah. you know, all of our original reporters, our playlist curators and our photographers. And then we, we've we onboarded several new reporters as well over yeah. the last like six months. So that's, that's been awesome. That's awesome. The writing team's dope too. Or like, uh, what was it? There was some Olivia. article. I think you, yeah, Olivia's killing it. Um, yeah. This is an article you wrote, Chrissy, the one for Funk Case and uh, on all the on the guys. I can't remember which mm, one it was. One? Or yeah, one? yeah, 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 that one. That was a mm -hmm. really good read. I liked that one a lot. Was that yeah. you or was that somebody else? No, I did the, I did Murder's the, Return and yeah. then I did, yeah, the Masked Rhythm alias one. Yeah, Thank that you. was a good read. I like that one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. it always makes me happy when people read the articles and then they like say things that you would only know if you read it in the article. And so it just makes me happy. How fast y'all are. I mean, it freaking Rampage announces and not even like an hour later, there's already an article up. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to read this stuff. You guys care. So I got to check it out. You know what I mean? It shows. Y'all y'all put in the work. It shows. Yeah. I mean, there is some like, you know, behind the scenes work that goes into it as well, because Rampage actually reached out to us. And That's so we hopped sick. on a call with the marketing manager and we also launched a podcast with Murdoch, the founder mm -hmm. of Rampage. That's sick. So that was our last episode. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. That was insane. <laughs> like dope. who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it was bound to happen and all it, all it takes is time. As long no, as you totally. keep pushing Literally. it, you're, you're doing it, you know, <laughs> Literally, <laughs> like, you are proof. We both, I mean, both of us, like both of our companies pretty much are proof that consistency can get you really far. Yeah. And like, guess what yeah. I was just listening to before this, just to get hyped up. I don't want to sound like that guy, but I'm going to, was it, what is it a mix or what is it? It's a mix. Is it, is it the one? Is it that mix? <laughs> the one I gave no. you guys like all those years ago? From two Which years one? ago that you did for us? Yes. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. The Dub FBI mix. Your yep. right control oh, radio geez. mix from two years yeah. ago. Like, oh my gosh. I still listen to that from time to time. And I'm just kind of like, damn. I mean, it's cool because I was super proud of it, but it was also like, damn, I've come such a long way from that. Like I was still figuring my stuff myself out when I made that mix. Mm -hmm. So like just, you know, hearing it today, what I'm doing now versus what I was doing then, it's just sick because it was like, you got, y'all saw it. I, I don't know. Yeah. Y'all, when you we the did that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was really cool. And that's why I told you, especially with the EP and you guys doing like the, all the coverage and everything, it means a lot. It helps a lot. Like I, I know y'all are busy. So I appreciate you taking the time to support the project and the music and everything, you know? So thank yeah. you. Well, I mean, and it means more to us. Like we try to cover the stories that we have a connection to. Mm -hmm. So like the stories that have legs and like stories that write themselves, you know? Yeah. It's like when I write an article about you, I know so much about you. Like we've gone <laughs> to so many shows together. We have yeah. like friendships that go on for years. Whereas like, you know, sometimes we'll get songs and they're really cool and we want to write about them, but it's a lot more challenging to cover that kind of project if yeah. we're not friends with people or things yeah. like that. I feel it. It helps because we have like a bunch of rapport. We've been together for years. We've mm -hmm. known each other. We've seen each other's projects grow. I mean, it's been awesome for both fronts. I get stoked when I see y'all do your thing online. I hope or I think you get stoked when yes. you see the stuff I'm doing too. So yes. it goes both ways. You know oh what I mean? Gosh. It's a cool friendship relationship that we got going on. I appreciate it. It's, it's we dope. were so stoked when you got signed to a booking agency. Yeah, I was too. <laughs> Congratulations. Like that's yeah. really massive to be with Wasserman. I, I wasn't with them last time we talked, right? At that no, point, no. Well, it was it was before my first tour and everything. That's when we talked last time, right? It was all that stuff. Yeah. I think we it's, were just about geez. to go on the Soul of a King tour the last yeah. time we... You're right. Yeah, the last time you yeah. hopped on the podcast with us, yeah. Wow, you were just so getting ready happened. to go on tour and we were talking about like, you know, what... Like, what are you scared? What were you most scared about? Or like, what are you most excited about? Like, oh isn't that crazy? Gosh. Time flies. <laughs> it's crazy how much has happened since then. Wow. Yeah. 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 No, the Wasserman, the Wasserman news was amazing. I mean, it couldn't have come at a better time. And I'm glad it happened when it did. You know, obviously as an artist, you're eager, you want it to happen sooner rather than later. But I, I'm one of those people where it's like hindsight's 2020. Mm -hmm. So when the stars align, they align perfectly. And yes. it couldn't have been a smoother transition, you know, like I felt ready for it. I felt like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm prepared for the responsibilities that y'all are about to give me. You know what I mean? Because it's it's not just an agent. It's it's a matter of it's somebody that's like, hey, you're telling me you want to do this. I will mm -hmm. give you what you need to make it happen. But again, mm -hmm. it's up to me to make it happen. So it, it, it couldn't have come at a better time. And I'm really, I'm really happy with, with how everything's going right now. It's awesome. It's oh, yeah. like, I love it. To your point, I feel like it's a two way street. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to get you bookings as your agent, but like it's your responsibility to stay active on social media, to keep mm -hmm. cranking out music and like to yeah. really take it seriously because, yeah, you can get bookings and like that's it. But if you don't have the music being put out and you don't have like yeah. the branding constantly out there in front of people, then there's like not a whole lot of longevity there. Yeah. Yeah. It goes both ways. I mean, it's funny. I talk to my manager, RJ, all the time and it's it's just a constant like we come from the same cloth. So it's staying busy is not a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just kind of like for in my eyes, for me in the project, it's it's almost like do or die. You know, I yeah, you know, like the last time we talked, I was still working full time, ended up going full time music That's after right, the yeah. fact. And ever since then, it's it's been like, OK, like I'm, I'm waking up earlier now than I did when I was working a full time job. You're hungry, like, man. Mm -hmm. It's it's like it's it's all on the line now. So I, I love it. Don't get me wrong. It's awesome. But it's it's also like everything's riding on this. So I'm going to give it mm -hmm. everything I got, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of RJ, how was Thunderdome, dude? The Bad News yeah. Bears. Uh, <laughs> amazing. Amazing. It's it's so much fun doing the Bad News Bears because RJ is such a laid back dude. Like he's so yes. about the cause. He's so about like 
it's funny. We were, we were on the phone last week and I was like, Hey man, just confirming, you know, how much time you want to give us. He's like, I'll give y'all 30 minutes out of my 45 or whatever. And I'm like, dude, it's your set. He's like, no, it's, it's our set. Like, it's like, I want it for us. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's like small things like that, that just show that like his heart is in a a different place than you would think it would be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Chiqui was awesome. Perry was awesome. Aiden was awesome. Uh, Morte, um, we were all in like a hotel room before the night, uh, just, you know, cooking up tunes. We were all kind of like, Hey man, this is Thunderdome rather than just straight freestyling it. Maybe we should be a little prepared. And we were all excited. We get on that stage and it just feels like family. It's just a good time. You know what I mean? Dude, yeah. Olivia sent us a video of Nightmare. That shit went (laughs) off, man. (laughs) Dude, it got played every day. Yeah, I've been playing that song every day. It has like 1.3K streams on YouTube. And speaking of Nightmare, Martin... Uh, alien park <laughs> seeing him at thunderdome was the best thing ever because he's never seen production like that aside from lost lands mm-hmm. so every time either his music got played or if he just saw his friend's music got played he's literally just giddy and jumping up oh and gosh. down it's my so heart. awesome <laughs> you know it's it's amazing like he he's so happy um cole actually sent me footage of him playing nightmare uh during his Ooh. set i wanted to be there i, I fortunately Denver uh, made me super late. Yeah. <laughs> I had a I had a layover and it was like a snowstorm or something. Ooh, Dude, yeah. it was blizzarding this weekend. Was, did y'all not expect it or was it like came out of nowhere? So like in Denver, they're like, oh, it's going to blizzard this weekend. Prepare. And we're like, yeah, right. We'll believe it when we see it. And we don't even care. And then it yeah. just dumped eight inches. Dude, yeah, because we've gotten like warnings all. before, like yeah. winter storm warnings. And then like if there's nothing, it's just yeah. drizzling. So, yeah. and then this time I was like, oh, like Chrissy was like, oh, it's supposed to blizzard. Like, hope you made it back from the airport. Cause I had just yeah. got back from Vegas Friday night and yeah. I was like, um, it's fine. Like, yeah, it's going to blizzard. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then I, we woke up the next morning. We're like, oh shit. <laughs> we have like, like over 40 packages to mail out of our new merch actually. So I was and like, it looks sweet. It looks Thank awesome. You. Actually, yeah. wifey hit me up the other day. He's like, did you see Dubs of FBI's new merch? It looks sick. And I'm like, hell oh. yeah. Like, oh, yeah, no, we, we, we keep up. We look, we both <laughs> Love look. That. You know, we were Thank both you. Vegan. Um, but yeah, uh, the, that snow caught us all off guard. We literally landed and the captain was like, uh, we're going to have to sit tight real quick and just figure this out. And three hours yeah. later, finally get off the plane just to get on the next plane and wait three, another three hours on the runway before we leave. Yeah. So I, that I didn't was get bad. to make. <laughs> Yeah. Well, because um, so we had Wobble Land that night and it mm-hmm. was like, yeah, phase one, um, stone level. Stone level yeah. 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 All of those boys. And I was texting them as they were like trying to land in Denver and Graham had to circle around for a while mm-hmm. before he could land. Yeah. And then Julian had to divert to Salt Lake City and actually go over there and land there before he could come here. And oh, his no. set was at seven, I think. So we he, were all he just made it though, like, right? Yeah, he, he made, made it. it. Yeah. That's crazy. He killed it, like always. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Julian's the homie. Dude shows up with the sticks and he's ready to go. He's always a good time. He's always yeah. a good time on stage. Oh, um, my gosh. Well, yeah. And like going back to the Thunderdome and Bad News Bears and everything, mm-hmm. I just like, I think it's so awesome that RJ is kind of like taking everyone under his wing and using his platform. And like, he's kind of just mentoring everyone. Like he's, he's mentored Yessi and I. Yeah. He was one of the first people who kind of like opened his heart to us and made mm-hmm. us feel like really comfortable by someone who was a long stay in the industry. Mm-hmm. So I really respect him for that. I remember y'all did the uh, interviews at his Ogden show. It's the first time. Yeah. I, I don't think, was that the first time I met y'all in person? I think so. No. No, I no. think I'd met you before then. No, I think we've met before that. Yeah. Maybe like but, at Lost Lands or something. But that was what, three years ago, four years ago at this point. So it's just, you know, and it was like a even free then, show. Yeah. yeah and even the then, got he, paid was for still, that. <laughs> he was still looking out for people, still showing love. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. RJ is one of those people where when he first picked me up, I, I say this with like all the love in the world, I was like, this is almost too good to be true. Like, where's the red flag? Yeah years later no red flag the dude has just been on it and he's been awesome and i love him i freaking love him that is my dude that's interesting you say that because i feel like in the music industry like for people like us and when we're just starting to break through there's a lot of times where things happen or like someone reaches out to you and you're like is this real or like is this too good to be true kind of like we've had a lot of those moments too like you know just with Shaq and stuff recently and we're just kind Mm -hmm. of like what why us like is this real like you said Yeah, I just met Shaq for the first time at Echo Stage probably two weeks ago. 
nicest dude ever picked me up hugged me like literally yeah. lifted me <laughs> off the ground dude, and like did you get a picture next to him i feel like he'd be twice it was, your size. <laughs> it was so busy so i was like i'm not gonna be that guy but yeah. i was like looking at him i was like you're a freaking beast like you were a monster but you were the <laughs> nicest dude i've ever met it was it was so like Brittany was right next to me and i'm like did that just happen <laughs> like like really it was so sick it was awesome i love that He's, yeah the love he shows for the whole community is insane like mm -hmm. every time i see his tweets anything he's talking about showing love to the people like the freaking video he posted like yesterday two days ago with welcome tune that was so Dude, random and but he it's tagged just, versa too i know mm -hmm. it's just like shaq just he didn't versa. have to do that yeah yeah and like the, i think the thing the reason like we connect with him so much is because he uses his platform to help people like mm -hmm. break through and like he uses like we get high off of helping artists reach new supporters. And it seems like that's what he's doing as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I see it. I see it. And it, again, it, that was another one of those, like, what are you going to do? What's mm -hmm. it look like when he first came through? And then it just, it just kept going. He just kept helping and supporting and everything. And it's, it's awesome. I love that guy. He's amazing. So much cool. love for Shaq and RJ, the yeah. guys who are doing the most for the community. Oh, they're doing so much. The glue yeah. that holds the industry together. <sighs> freaking love them both man. they're awesome they're I know. awesome that's so cool well, what well, do you have coming up so what shows do you have or anything that you can mention yeah yeah, yeah. no this is a lot we can mention now um so we got the bite back tour coming up that's going to be like less than a month um i'm yes. really excited about that it's my first headline tour uh we Ooh. got alien park for support uh ecliptic uh we got sanzu and victim which i'm really really the stoked to have boys they are killing it right now so i'm super stoked to have them and then literally the weekend after the tour's over i go right on the road with rj go on tour with him for underland Ooh. Um, oh my yeah, gosh that's convenient it starts right when yours ends honestly it couldn't have worked out any better it was great i was like sweet i don't mind like let's just get just go straight yeah. to work let's do it yeah um lots Hustle. of back-to-backs <laughs> with resurrect this year Fun. Is, oh my god the one you guys did at mission was so fun that was so I'm much so fun happy. dude oh my god the energy there in the mosh pits <laughs> were just insane <laughs> i love brian so freaking much every time we go back to back it's like we just push each other in the green room or in the hotel when we're putting our set together and it's just like it, he's just somebody that makes you want to be a better dj and the way he talks to me seems like it, it's feelings mutual so every time we do back to back it's just the most fun so when our you know when we were talking to like the agents and my manager and everybody was like yo let's do these back to backs with you know brian him and i both like text mm -hmm. each other like are you like are you stoked i'm stoked like yeah. this is awesome <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm really excited for that we're doing like our toronto debut together mm -hmm. um doing like edmonton a lot of a lot of uh canada date debuts this year and it's sick that i get to do it with him so i'm really excited about that yeah i feel like that's one of those back-to-backs where it makes total sense because you guys yeah. have music together like your friends mm -hmm. you know all of that whereas sometimes i see back-to-backs and i'm like how did this get like, booked? <laughs> like why is this a thing like who approved yeah. this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah dude i'm obsessed uh, with that collab that you have with resurrect on the ep oh, like, thank you that one goes off i remember Noah, anti-hero, he played mm -hmm. it at his, one of his sets last year. Shout out anti-hero. I, I remember him. like I got, yeah, shout out anti-hero. <laughs> I remember I got a video and I was yeah. just looking through the videos. I heard that one and I was like, yo, what track is this? Like, is this, <laughs> is this Fox? And he's like, oh, that's Resurrect and Bastive. And I'm like, of course it is. Yes. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> that fucks. We, we were freaking out when we were making that tune because the way it worked was Brian sent me like just one drop, just a demo. And then it just, it was just like, he's like, I think this fits you. And I was like, hell yeah, it fits. Like I'm so in. And it was, I was just like, just trust me. Let me give you the idea that I hear for the whole thing or whatever. Not the whole thing, but like I, I put some more work into it, sent it to him. And it just, it, the chemistry was unreal for that one and feel alive. Like both of them, we were just super mm -hmm. stoked with the outcome. Uh, but you will die. I think is definitely the one where, like I start my, I've started my sets with that song pretty much every show for the last five, six months. And it wasn't even like, there was days where I was like, I should probably change it up. But I'm like, I love this song. Like this, this, this is the one that gets me in the mood to do this thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad y'all have been enjoying it. I, that's definitely a big favorite one off the EP for me. 
Yeah. And like speaking of all the shows that you mentioned, I'm just curious because I feel like if I if I was in your position, mm-hmm. at least back when we talked on our last podcast, you were getting ready to go on tour with Sullivan King. Like, how does your mindset how is it different now versus then? Because I feel like if I were you, I would have been so fucking nervous to go on all those shows. And then like, I feel like now that it's over and you have that experience under your belt, maybe the headline tour isn't as nerve wracking. Um, I'm very blessed and fortunate to have really good people around me. Um, I've fortunately had a lot of advice from multiple different people in the industry from different levels in their careers. Some people that are, that have been doing this for years, RJ has been doing it for a decade. Um, it's no secret. Me and Sullivan King, Keaton, we're, we're really good friends too. He's given me a lot of advice. Um, so when the headline tour happened, I mean, they they gave me the option. They were like, we can do it first half of the year. We can do it second half of the year. And they've just taught me so much and have just kind of guided me and helped me out so much that I straight up told them, I was like, look, I'm nervous as hell to do this early. But if you guys think I'm ready, like yeah. I have that trust in them. And they're like, yeah, you're ready. Like, let, you know, let's run it. So I'm I'm not nervous because it's just like for example, one of the one of the small little ticks in this whole thing is uh, RJ made this joke one time. He's like, "Yo, just be ready. Everything's super last minute. Yeah. Majority of things are never gonna go as planned." Um, so with that being said, when the tour came along, like I'll let you guys know this. Uh, fun fact to anybody watching we originally were gonna like have like a whole month of like we had months of prep time and then we were like we have another month so this is time to lock everything in that whole month turned into like five days but because they had prepped me i was just like cool let's make Mm -hmm. it work let's just do what we got to do and i let's try to make it kick ass the best way that we can and we did you know so it's it's just kind of like that that calmness and that sense of like everything's gonna be fine even if it doesn't feel like it that's mm-hmm. really helped me not stress out about a lot of the bigger things. Um, I try to just be as calm as possible and just try to get the job done as best as I can and as efficiently as I can. Mm-hmm. But uh, going back to the other question, um, I don't get the nerves kind of ended about halfway through the tour, the first round, mm-hmm. because you you, you kind of realize like I used to be the guy that was like, I need to practice, like I need to run through my set before every show. I need to make sure everything's good. I need to do blah, 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 blah. You do it 30 times in a row, you kind of realize these things that you're freaking out about, you don't really need to freak out about it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that really helped out. Like now I'm, I'm much more confident in what I do uh, in the sense of like putting sets together, things like that. Like I've, mm-hmm. I've been able to do it much uh, for longer periods of time now where like I have a better idea because there is something to be said about somebody that doesn't do it consistently, maybe like once a month, twice a month you're like, it's just long enough where you kind of forget what to expect in a crowd. Yeah. But because I got, uh, because I've been doing it consistently, it's kind of like, okay, I know what's going to work now. I know what I need to tweak. I know what I'm doing too much of, or what I need to do more of things like that. And it's just like a puzzle piece. You know, I've just been yeah. trying to figure it out throughout the, uh, the months that I've been doing it. So that's, that's been helping out a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, to your point, I think it's awesome that you chose to do it in the first half of the year, even though it wasn't like as comfortable as it could be, because I saw this quote today and it was like, if you want things that you've never had, you have to do things you've never done. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like that's the perfect example is your tour. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, let's just jump. Like, let's just do it. And that's going to expedite your growth this year so much quicker. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. one of those, it's like, you just got to jump off the cliff and just go for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Spread them wings, do the damn thing. And you know, they trusted me and I was like, well, if you, th- if you see it, then Obviously, I see it like Brittany saw it. Everybody saw it. So I was like, cool, let's do it. All right, I'm in. And uh, it just excited me how quick it happened, though. That's what tripped me out. It was like Jake signed me. And not even two weeks later, he sent us like a list. He was like, all right, here's everything we're going for. Here's blah, 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 blah. Like me and RJ both were just like, (laughs) dream come true. Damn, this guy's like cooking fast. I mean, if Jake is telling you that you're ready, then I think you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and yeah, nick too legend. Uh, oh my god yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. nick nick as oh well gosh. uh him and jake both they they're both my agents but like nick when we first talked when i first talked to wasserman i mean nick had already been a fan of the music he he was like super excited about the vision so both of them i got massive love for like they've both been doing a lot for me and i really really appreciate it and it shows i mean you guys have seen mm-hmm. I mean, if you go to my website that's the most shows i've ever had it, you know prepped for the year like mm-hmm. already you know so i'm super excited that's amazing. do you feel like you have to 
you know, tweak your sets for every show you play or like you have to like tweak it a little bit, add some new songs, like to not make it sound the same or like, what are your thoughts um, on that? Not, not as, not as, I'm not as harsh on that as I used to be. Um, I am pretty harsh. Like if I go back to the same city, that's close enough to similar area. I do want to switch it up enough to be like, Hey, I don't want to give you the same show as last. I want to give you something different. Um, but <clears throat> It's kind of it's kind of weird because half of me wants to give them a different show every time around the country. Like if I play tonight or tomorrow, I want both sets to be different. But there's times where I've had people tell me like, hey, I, I wish or I, I can't wait to hear your Lost Land set live. You know what I mean? And those type of people, when they tell me that, I'm kind of like, I've heard it so many times that I think it's old. But I'm like, you've never heard it live. You've only heard it in your car. I remember what it feels like to be like, I want to hear this live. It's a different experience. So it's it's kind of like a catch twenty two, but I, I do try to throw in new music throughout the sets. Um, for example, uh, I was in Columbus. That's an example of something I switched it up completely. I had played Bluestone pretty much three times the past six months. Last time I was there was like Halloween, so I was like, okay, I want to give you guys completely something different, something fresh. But the the toss up is, um, I had met a lot of people at that show that were like, this is the first time we've ever seen you. I didn't play Rain Check. I didn't play Carrie is home because I felt like I played those songs so many times in that market. But, you know, when I think of those people, I'm like, damn, you've never heard that song live with me, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why it's mm -hmm. kind of tough to figure out what do I want to keep in the sets? What do I want to take out? What am I ready to give up? You know? So it, it's, it's, it's kind of a balancing act. Um, just trying to figure it out. Um, but for the tour, it's pretty much going to be new stuff. And if I'm keeping old things in, I'm definitely going to be doing VIPs and like Ooh. edits and things like that. Yeah. I'm a yeah. big fan of doing stuff like that for sure. Mm, Barking awesome. at Thunder VIP? When? V3, when? probably. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we had the drum and bass one. And then me and Layla were talking to Thunderdome. We we're like, we, we actually have already talked about doing a new track together, but we were both like, hey, it's probably time to do another VIP of Barking. I think Love it's time. That. Yeah. Or another collab, you know, yeah. we don't complain. Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need to do a back to back. I know. I know we, we, we talked about it last time we hung out. We both really <laughs> want to do it. It would be sick. It's crazy. It's late. Lay's insane because I've seen her play at the small spot called the depot, which is in Baltimore, 15 people in the room at best, not even a legit sound system, no subs, like just, it was a bar. And to see her oh go from that, go from that to, to like Thunder just, Dome? and she's got them in the palm of her hands, man. They oh my love God. her. And Tomorrowland. Yeah. 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 Like so she, cool. she was a rocket ship. So it's crazy to see mm -hmm. the explosion. You know what I mean? Where she is now. You can't deny. It. You see the videos, like the fans love her. And it's oh it's awesome God. to see. It's I really know. Cool. I'm so happy for her. It's another one of those where like we met her in April of 2020 yeah. doing like a freaking Twitch live stream. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> yeah. just randomly found her on Instagram one day. Yeah. Yeah, y'all did yeah. that like uh, online stream day, right? We just had a bunch of of producers DJing or think something like that. Didn't you we do did something like, like that? Like at least like once or twice a month, we did like mm -hmm. live streams and we would invite artists, like make the whole flyer. Like yeah. we had Jessica mm -hmm. Autobred, Stone Level, and Chassis do oh, live yeah. streams for us. That Remember one was that, Chrissy? Sick. Yeah. But yeah, that was back to back, like B3B basically. But yeah. um yeah. Layla, we had like an all women, all girls live stream, and it was like That's... the weekend of my birthday. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, let's do like a birthday celebration for Yessi slash That's let's invite girls to yeah. do a live stream. <laughs> That's so sick. That's actually how I found out about you guys. I remember now. That's the first time. Yeah. She, that she one? Because of her? Yeah. We had a group chat with all the LT uh, homies at that time. And Layla was like, I'm doing a oh. live stream for Dubstep FBI. I was like, who's that? <laughs> and that's where we found out about show. Yeah. So that, oh that was it. That was it. Yeah. Look where we are now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Aww. Yeah. You guys have been some of our longest friends in the industry. It's pretty cool yeah. to see. No, it's sick. And it's important to have mm -hmm. that, especially it's so busy. So many new people coming in. It's good to have familiar faces around. So that's why totally. I'm always stoked when I see y'all at events and things like that. It's like, cool. Homies are here. What's up? Yes. You know what I mean? So it's sick. It's nice. Yeah. Love that. Uh, I wish you were coming to ADC Mexico because we'll be there. We're super excited <laughs> for that. I wish maybe I really next year. Do one. Yeah, I, I can't be too mad. Like I really want to ADC Mexico, but like I'm not, you know, I'm not pressed too hard. I'm just at the point now where I'm just like anything I can get, I'm stoked on. Festivals. You know I mean? You're exactly. probably getting put on so many festivals that you can't even announce yet. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> um, Rampage was just announced last week. Congratulations, yeah. because that is fucking massive. I was freaking out. 
I was I would have too. Because RJ just tells me so nonchalant. He's just like, guess what, buddy? I'm like, what? He's just like, you got Rampage. And I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> like, just oh drop the God. bomb like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, is that I your first year up pants. show? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh it is. Oh, my God. It is. And have I've, you been over oh, there before? No. Oh my God, you're gonna love Belgium. I'm so excited. Well, I don't know if y'all remember, but I did start off as like a drum and bass artist mm. when the project first started. So the fact that I get to go over there, I'm just like, I have so mm-hmm. many things that I'm like, I can't wait. Because I, I play them every once in a while in the states, but I'm just like, I can't wait to go to an audience where it's like, this is the norm. This is what they, you know, they like. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of stuff where I'm like. I can't, I just can't wait to test it out and try it out and things like yeah. that. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah. Throw some heart style in there too. Oh, hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, honestly this year I am going to be expanding a lot. I, I like this bite back EP is probably going to be like the big dub EP for this year. But I mean, y'all have heard my music in the past. Like this year, I was, it's funny. I was talking to my team about it. I was like, I really want to expand. I have these or I have this music already made, you know, mm-hmm. that I'm playing at shows and things, but it's like, now I really want to bring it to the forefront of the project. So like the hard style, the drum and bass, um, I have some things that's gone on the trap vibe. I have some things that have been going on the down tempo, you know, cool. mid tempo vibe. Um, I just, I'm just at the point now where I just want to expand. I just want to try different things, keep it, keep it me, but you know, mm-hmm. do different styles and things like that. Yeah. And being able to play it out live, see the crowd reaction. I feel mm-hmm. like that would help pick which ones to release. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I love just that. <laughs> seeing people like Hayden and, you know, Keaton do their sets live, mm-hmm. you know, Kazo and, and Sullivan King, when, whenever I see so their good. sets, it just, it's just a spark of inspiration. It's just like all these different genres, the way that they're cohesive, cohesively putting it together. I mm-hmm. mean, fuck, even Jeff this past weekend, the way that he was thrown down from the dub to the house to the DMB and everything, it was, it was Dude. sick. Those it was visuals. Sick. Oh my mm-hmm. God. Insane. Oh my God. Yeah. His new, he did all new visuals, right? Insane. No, it was nuts. It was nuts. The production was insane. That was my first Thunderdome and it completely blew me away. It was like, it was everything people had said it would be, you know, like the right, amount Chrissy, of pyro. You gotta go next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, we're definitely you going should. next year. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised they can get away with that kind of pyro inside. It's, <laughs> I thought it was going to look bigger. I was because honestly, when the pyro comes through, you realize how big the room is. Yeah. Once they did like the fireworks and the and the pyro inside and everything, you're just like, oh my gosh, this is actually a massive freaking room. Like it's because I just put two and two together, like what it looked like the Lost Lands. But on, then like we we were standing in front of house, which is all the way in the back, and like I had to zoom in my camera to see things. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's it's just like that's how big the venue is, and it, it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's nuts. Oh yeah, so, and that that mosh pit that you guys did with all the artists that was hilarious. Amazing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Saw videos of that. It's funny because like even people who aren't on our street team, we just get DMs from everyone at every festival around the world <laughs> now, and they're like, "Here's my videos," and that's they're how like, we know what's going on. They're like, "Arrest that's these people, Dust FBI." That's dope. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So people are just like, "Yo, investigate this shit. Yeah. Check this shit out." That's Always. dope. That's awesome. That's like, really, I have a case really file for you, Dust FBI. <laughs> Literally. I love that. The lingo is on the, you know what I mean? The lingo is working. That's right? sick. That's going to be awesome. It's Ugh. almost like, the, it's like, thanks for doing the job, guys. All right, we'll go check it out now. We'll go, we'll mm-hmm. go figure it out. That's awesome. That's We'll cool. send some backup yeah. immediately. Yeah. Dude, shout out yeah. to the fans, man. I feel like the fans in the dubstep industry are just like some of the most passionate, yes. like warm hearted, just like friendly people that I've ever met. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Nah, absolutely. Like, I just love being in the crowd with them and like, it just warms my heart every time like an artist comes up to us and they're like, Hey, like, thanks for adding my song to your slappers playlist or thanks for commenting on my SoundCloud mix. Like just things like that, where I'm like, Oh my God, like, I'm so glad that we were able to at least like make your day or like, you know, Mm -hmm. help you gain a couple of new supporters, like even just resharing something on our Instagram story, like little things like that. It just always warms my heart. And I just love meeting our fans in the crowd Mm -hmm. and the crowd is just a lot more fun yeah Yeah. they're they're awesome like the other day it was uh it was a whole bunch of us but like i was heading up to the pit with uh morphic we were going down to the main (laughs) and morphic's always in the pit (laughs) as we were walking just the smiles on people's faces like oh my god holy shit blah 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 and i'm just i just kept saying like happy thunder don't you know making people feel good and stuff like that but it was so funny because we were literally getting rocked in the pit and then i just turned around the dude's just like oh 
it's you. What the fuck? And I'm like, hi. <laughs> they just keep it running. That's so you funny. Know? It's just they're, they're so happy and it makes me happy, you know, because you're stuck in this, you know, you're stuck in the studio, you're stuck, you know, on the road, you know, you, you, it's a pretty lonely job sometimes. So when you get to meet people in the crowd and they're that hyped, it's it only like it just reminds you like, OK, I'm not just talking to myself. I'm not just, you know, doing something within four walls. So it makes a difference. And, you know, I love them. I think it's awesome. Some kid gave me some candy this weekend and I like I straight up told him, I was like, are you sure you want to give this to me? Like that looked like a lot of work, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's like, yes, please, Are please. Sure? And I, was, I was like, hell yeah. So now I got it like put up in the wall right now to, you know, I keep everything that people give me. So it, it was awesome. It's sick. They're so sweet. And, I, you I know, I, I, mm-hmm. without them, there is no project. You Agreed. Know? That's just Agreed. the way I look at it. Without them, there's no support. And if there's no support, then what the hell are we doing? You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of the fans, you got a lot of them out there. We got a lot of submitted questions to get oh, through. Oh, cool. Sick. Yeah, we, we got so many. I don't think we're we're not even going to get through half of these, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, Ouch. we'll have to try not to go off on tangents. Okay. All right. I'll be short. You all can cut me off and be like, yo, shut up. Next one. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah, like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> we, we should, like, do, you know, on Zoom, you can, like, add an emoji reaction or whatever. <laughs> Perfect. Do that. Yeah. Seriously. I'm in a talking mood. It's my fault. That's perfect. Or just quite a just do up. that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Good job. Yeah, good answer. Now. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. So Deegan Lynch, he's one of our good friends. He's asking, what are some of your favorite rock bands? Oh, okay. I have a lot. Um. So I'll try to keep it with what I'm listening to a lot. I'm listening to Throne a lot. They're a kick-ass band. Um. You can consider them what you want, but they would always be on my list. Nine Inch Nails, a hundred percent. Um. And then Architects has always been big on the list. Alpha Wolf, too. I've been listening to a lot of Alpha Wolf. Uh, not necessarily rock, they're more than on the metal side. But yeah, though, just to keep it short, those are the big ones that I've been listening to a lot lately. Mm-hmm. Sick. Is, that, oh, is yeah. that short enough? Yeah. No, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one, Mr. Post Main. Shout out. He's always asking the good questions. What do you got? When is Bastiv going to drop exclusive flannels merch? Oh, would it be crazy if I told you it's already in the works? Flannel merch? What? Ooh. Yeah, dude, we got a lot of cool stuff coming. Is it a blue yeah. one? You won't. I can't tell you that much. But yeah, we're working on it. Yeah. Yeah, we're putting it together. Yeah, actually, I just had a phone call the other day put, putting stuff together. So all of that's being in okay. the works. We got a lot of cool stuff coming for the tour. Yeah. Yes, I was going to say, better be able to get it on the tour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are hustling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big opportunity. Absolutely. Um, Ranvac official, he's asking what your thoughts are on the Dallas Bay scene. And he says that they fucking love you there. Dallas has my heart. They are awesome. I have so much fun playing there. Um, I was really blown away by how many fans I had in Dallas. Uh, last time I played there, I pulled up and I was in the green room because I'd never been there. I didn't really know anybody from Dallas either because um, I was there pretty early. I, I go to shows early mm-hmm. and I went outside just to go use the restroom and I never made it back. I just, I just hung out like I just kept meeting people. And like it was it was such an overwhelming feeling of love that like I told RJ, I literally texted him that night. I was like, yo, if the, whenever the time comes for me to come back, I am so fucking there. Like, bring me back. So, yeah, I love them. They're amazing. All of them are, they're so kind, good food too. Shout out to the people, the locals that told me all the good spots. I actually got to find some good food out there. So that's cool too. Wait, do you have a stop there on the tour? Um, No, no, unfortunately I don't believe we do. We were supposed to, but it just didn't work out through timing, but we are working on a Dallas day for sure. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The <laughs> Dallas scene looks sick. Um, mm-hmm. When we did our... We, I mean, yeah, we have yet to go investigate Texas. Never been there. We did our basically, <clears throat> excuse me, best of 2023. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people got butthurt that we didn't mention Texas, but we were <laughs> like, we just mentioned our experiences, like what we thought was the best for us from our experience. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. where are the shows happening in Texas, baby? Like, let us know I, and we'll go yeah. investigate. <laughs> Well, it's funny they mentioned that because one of the big conversations that I kept hearing around there was that that's what they're working on. They want to have more events out there. And I was like, yeah, I mean, the more events, the more opportunity for people to come out. Um, I think Dallas is one of those underrated areas and it's not their fault. It's just a matter that there's not a lot going on just yet. But I feel like once things start cooking over there, then, yeah, 
y'all mm-hmm. will recognize like, oh damn, this is this is a good spot. This is like shit goes down here. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they have lights all night. Um, Ilfest, right? Ilfest yeah. is there, or is that in? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they and they just winter. had Toxic Winter with the uh-huh. Prime and Mark My Words guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and Ubby yeah. 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 Playing my first WW this year, actually. That's a cool Ooh. festival. Yeah, that should be fun. Yeah. All right. Next one here, which I'm actually curious about. Okay. From It's Chewy. Uh, what is your pre-show ritual? Um, it depends on the, how busy the day is but if it's up to me uh little honey um and then y'all are gonna laugh but i really i i do be listening to those motivational videos on lock i go to the restroom shut the door shut my head down listen to for like i got like i literally have like three favorites that are three minutes long put it on zen out just get ready mentally some vocal warm-ups and then FaceTime my wife before I get on stage and uh yeah just do the damn thing I love that the honey do you have honey on your writer yes I do <laughs> <laughs> yes I do you listen to was David it Goggins mission? <laughs> oh. Huh? Oh, what was sorry, that sorry Chrissy sorry I was just gonna say did you have honey at mission I don't think I saw no, uh, honey did not. Um, I think it was in a different room and I just didn't grab it, which, oh. which was fine. I didn't need it, but yeah, it, I'm, I'm pretty religious about the honey at every show. Um, it, it helps <laughs> out a lot. Awesome. It helps out a lot. <laughs> well, I was asking, do you listen to David Goggins? He's like one of my favorite motivational guys. I feel like I have, I've listened you to so have. many. There's a few that like, I, there's a few that like on top of my head are like, I know them by name. Like I'm really big on, um, God, I hope that this, I'm thinking the right guy. I think his name is Jim Roth. He's like an older dude. I think he passed away already, but he, the way that he just talks was just, it's calming. I like it. It just makes me feel good, you know, but I feel like, I, I feel like I have heard the uh, person you're mentioning. Well, David Goggins is not really like calming. It's very like, aggressive oh, yeah. military type like no 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 I, I'm, get your I'm shit on both together. angles yeah I'm both yeah. angles I'm on both sides it's it's funny because I'd be I'd be listening to the to the ones that got like a little bit of everything in one so one second someone's yelling at me and then the next second they're just like yo you got this just calm down and I'm just mm-hmm. like yeah I, I like both of them I feel like I feel like both are necessary you know what I mean both styles mm-hmm. I'm Who's the, the one we listen to Yessie the one in the um, morning. So Rob Dial, the mindset mentor. That's a right. really good podcast that mm-hmm. we listen to pretty that much out. every morning. He has like a new episode pretty much at least four days out of the week. Sick. And yeah, by the time I'm getting ready for work, he already has I'm a new episode y'all. out. I'm mm-hmm. gonna text y'all just so I can have that time. Cause I I I do this on a daily. Like that's like usually my morning ritual in general is what I do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up and just make sure yeah. I got the names down and check that out for sure. I just like him because he tells it how it is. Like he's not mm-hmm. one of those guys that's like, you got to wake up at 5 a.m. and go work out to be successful or you got to go yeah. do this to be successful. You got to do that. He's like, yeah. yo, like I drink alcohol too. I like to have fun. I like to party. Yeah. I like to travel. Like I'm not a morning guy. Like, yeah. And, you know, he's just, but a lot of the stuff really hits home and like yeah. really makes me reflect and be like, oh, maybe I should change my mindset on that. Or maybe I should yeah. do this or. Yeah. Maybe I should journal about that. Maybe that'll help yeah. me get through this little hump that I'm going through right now or something. You know. A hundred percent. No, you're <laughs> preaching the choir. I mean, we're all we're on the same page with all of that stuff, man. I mean, like that that's a huge part of my life. And it's funny. I keep it kind of quiet just because I don't know if it's corny. And it's funny every time I say that the people that I tell it to, they're just like, yo, shut up. It's not corny. Like I wish not I had the all. patience. No. I was like, I wish I had the patience to hear that. I'm like, I do. I don't, I don't know. It helps me. You know, it got me this far. So I it's it's been working. So I just keep doing it. Yep. Manifestation, baby. It's real. Fucking percent. It's real. Very, it's very real. Y'all already know I'm a firm believer. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we get along so well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Perry Petrie is saying that your vocals are amazing. And he's asking if you were ever in a band before you started making dubstep. Yes, I was. Uh, I think we had gone serious for about four years, five years. I mean, it, it got it got pretty serious to the point where I was a senior and I straight up told my parents, I was like, yo, we might be able to go on tour. Can I just get the fuck out and go do that? And of course they said no, which I'm glad they did. You gotta finish high school. Uh, yeah. Well, I was like a two weeks away. So it was like, ah, it oh, doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, you know what I mean? But I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad they said no because obviously my life went a very different direction. But yeah, we hit, we hit I was in a band for quite some time and I was the vocalist of the band. Um, I was the producer of the band. 
we were too fun fact we were too broke to get a, a producer to record our records so i was already a little bit familiar with fl studio so i was like fuck it i'll learn what i need to do and i'll just record this so we don't have to pay shit and that's actually <laughs> how i learned how to do everything i'm doing right now now look <laughs> at you you are the producer Best decision <laughs> ever. It pays to be broke sometimes. Yeah. Oh, no, The Power of Broke. Have you read mm -hmm. that book? I haven't read the book, but I, yeah, the statement itself, yes. Dude. That book is fucking amazing. Yeah. You yeah. have to read it. Yeah. Um, I actually haven't read that one. Out. I'm going to check that one out then. Got to read it, dude. I'll lend you my, my copy, Yessie. Yeah, you better. I'm going over right now after this. <laughs> All right. No, I'll send my carrier <laughs> pigeon for you. <laughs> 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 All right. So Josh X Williams, what song took the longest to make? Mm, that's a good question. Sacrifice. I had held on to that one for so long. Um, it's a very personal song. So that one just took a while to finish. I didn't know how I wanted to finish it, but it's one of those things where once the wheel started turning, it came in immediately. Um, that one was off my Curious Home EP. And that one, I honestly wasn't planning on releasing. Uh, Cliptic, Lays, all the homies that were around me at that time, because I wasn't really known at that time, they all said, they're like, you're an idiot if you don't put this out. Um, so it kind of put me in a position to be like, okay, I think now's the time. And, you know, that was around the time where Jeff had just started noticing the project. Um, you know, I just started talking to Subsidia. And I uh, was trying to get Lost Lands at that time. So it just, everything mm -hmm. kind of felt like the pressure was on. And I was like, I feel like this is really the time where I really want to finish this song. And like, everything is like helping me get the words across the way I want it to. But that one, I think I had it in the vault four years. And Whoa, I would tell that was one of your first songs as vast of then or? Yeah. I, that was like one. Yeah. Uh, so I started the demo in 2019. It was literally a little melody, but the real song happened during COVID when like literally the world was shattered and I was like at the worst mental space ever. And that's where the lyrics came. And every time I went back to it, I was like, nah, you know, that's not the time like this one, you know, I got to actually like be in the space. Um, so that's why it took so long. But uh, yeah, nah, honestly, that's still to this day, one of my all time favorite songs I've ever put out. It gets slept on, which is fine. I don't care. It's a more mm -hmm. of a, per it's a more of a personal one for me, you know? That was yeah. a really good track. Yeah. Thank you. I do like that yeah. one. Thank you. I love um, that it holds a lot of meaning for you too. And like the story behind it, but yeah. I'm glad that you listened to mm -hmm. Jake and Layla. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, they kept hounding me for it. They're like, you need to finish it. You need to finish it. And then finally, you know, I did. And I was super, super happy with it. They, they all mean something to me. And I think that's why I think that's why I always do EPs versus singles because I feel like with EPs, it's much easier for me to get the full story across, you know, mm -hmm. where it's mad at lyricism matters to me a lot. So I, I've always appreciated the fact where it's like, I can have this one song that may not do very well to the masses, but you know, it, it adds to the story. It adds depth and granted it may not go to the masses. The few that do get it and do understand they're with me, they get it, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why I like to write the bigger projects. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Thresher Music is asking, what tips do you have for artists trying to grow their career while working full time? Oh, hold on to every fucking lesson. That desperation to get the fuck out of the office, you will never get that again once you go full time. There is something to be said about being tired, being stressed, just waiting all for, like I'm getting choked up just talking about it. I'm There's, choking up now. <laughs> there is something to be said about just wanting to do nothing more than going home on the dog, pursuing your career while you're doing something that you know is not benefiting your fucking life. And I miss it. I was I would never go back to a full time job. No fucking way. But there are lessons to be learned. So fucking pay attention. Look around you. Pay attention to the work ethic. I mean, my old job, I hated it. But it taught me a lot. I mean, there's days where I've clocked in 16, 17 hours just, just on this shit alone, not even working full time, like just going full time on music. And if it wasn't for all the amount of work I had to put in working full time and trying to pursue music, I wouldn't be able to hang. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So definitely pay attention to the discipline, you know, take it as an opportunity to be like, 
this is my bread and butter for my real life, but this is also the bread and butter to pursue my career. You know, they, there is no plan B or plan A. The way I, the way I was raised was like, there's a plan A. And if you want to do something, do whatever you need to do to make it make sense. But there is no backup, you know? Um, so I don't, now that I think back into my old job, all the long hours, all the longing to be home and work on the career and things like that, hold on to it because you're going to want to remember those days once you, if and when you do get to the point where you are full time, you're going to want that in your, uh, your arsenal. Like conditioning. Habits. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the way I would look at full-time job. Look at it as work ethic conditioning. Mm -hmm. That way when yeah. it does come, you're ready. Seriously. It makes yeah. a huge difference. Yeah. To and my it. favorite, my favorite quote that Chris and I always say in pretty much every episode is make your living during the day, build your wealth at night. Yup. That's mm -hmm. how it is. So that's literally our lives these last percent. four years. Yes. That is our life. And I mean, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. I absolutely love my full-time job. I love working for Blazy Susan. This is That's like good. the first time I've ever actually worked somewhere where like they've actually been so supportive of Dubstep BI. And That's awesome. The CEO is just so supportive of like what Chrissy and I are doing. They're always like, hey, if there's any ways that we can, if there's anything that we can do to help elevate you girls and get you more recognition, That's awesome. let us know. It's crazy. That's like, huge. It's just, it's such a relief for me. That, and yeah. Don't get me wrong. You don't have to hide sales, it. So it's like, sales yeah. is tough. You got numbers. You I got numbers to hit. So I can't yeah. forget that. But it just feels so like more motivating and fulfilling yeah. to be able to like yeah. work for a company that offers this. But like before that, yeah. yeah. Sales, <laughs> sales oh is my strong. God. Sales is Dude. strong. <laughs> yeah, see, and I were in Iceland and she was fucking working. <laughs> I had to be in Greece. I had to be taking demo calls and zoom, like zooming and like, yep. yeah. yeah, I had to be like, yeah, taking sales calls. Like while huh. in Iceland, we literally had to pull over at times, like literally. at some cafes yeah. in the middle of nowhere and like yeah. try to connect to the Wi-Fi so that I can yeah. hop on a zoom meeting and mm -hmm. hop on a random, like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, That's I, the stuff I, people don't see. They just see the Instagram nope. posts, they you don't know, see it's it like, oh, your life must be so nice. Like you get to travel all over and like. <sighs> Yeah, that's nice. But like both of us were fucking working our asses off on that trip. Yep. It's just being car sales. So I had customers hitting up my phone all the time. I'd be a lost lens, hitting on my phone, I'll get back to oh the my hotel because there's no service. I'm like, shit, I'm so sorry. Yada, yada, yada. But like, yeah, there is a stress factor to being like, I am still in work mode. Even if I don't want to be, I have no choice. Mm -hmm. That's just how sales is. Period. Exactly. I mean, you're, you're always working. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I feel you on that. I'm yeah. glad they're supportive because shit, I've had times in, in the car sales where <laughs> they laughed and it's just, it's hard when, when the people that, you know, sign your paychecks don't support it, but it sounds awesome. The fact that they do support you guys and what you're doing. Yes. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. That goes and that's how we met them. Actually, day. we were at church mm -hmm. night club out here and we met the CEO so will at, in the backstage area we were literally just smoking a joint that's so out. sick <laughs> fucking <laughs> denver dude night. yeah on a fucking thursday night denver. we were just like hey what's up like i'm yesy what do you do that's so sick <laughs> we're taking Fuck. tequila shots and shit that's <laughs> and fucking then dope. she got a fucking job from him <laughs> hell yeah that's fucking awesome <laughs> yeah so, this goes okay. to show networking baby networking tequila joints and that's another and thing that was another offer. point <laughs> that was another point i wanted to bring across too where you know, you make your living during the day, you build your wealth at night, but mm -hmm. your network is your net worth. Oh, People are always like, how did you grow Dubs FBI to mm -hmm. where it is? Or like, mm -hmm. how are you doing it? And it's literally mm -hmm. like, just get out there, go to shows, yep. go meet people, go shake hands, mm -hmm. like exchange numbers, exchange information, and just like find ways that you can add value to others without expecting anything in return. And That's it'll huge. all come to you. That's like, very huge and so important. You're absolutely yeah. right. I didn't even think to mention that. That's that's such a huge factor. I mean, a lot of the success of the project really came from the networking. I mean, Je Jeff helped out a lot. Uh, RJ helped out a lot. You know, they played my music and they they were, you know, when you post a clip like Excision played my song, blows up. It goes well. You know what I absolutely. mean? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then you start getting the eyes of other people. I think the important part too, though, is to be prepared to network. You know, mm -hmm. be prepared to talk to them when they reach out to, you know, uh, know how to act, know how to respond. You know, I always kind of made it a mission to not be a fanboy, but show my respect, you know, and be like, look, I obviously I love everything you're doing. I have massive respect for you. But, you know, these are full time guys. You know, it, it was one of those things where it's like, don't I didn't want to come across to them as a major fan. I want to come across to them as like I'm a producer trying to be where you are. 
mm-hmm. you know? So to anybody that, you know, the guy that was asking about tips and stuff like that, that's a huge part of it too. Knowing how to act, knowing how to present yourself and knowing how to mm-hmm. talk to people and things like that when you're networking, because the networking goes so fucking far. It's huge. Key yeah. loved my music and I knew how to talk to him. We had a FaceTime call and that was a wrap. Like I knew this tour, I knew the Thrones of Blood tour was going to go well. You know, I knew that we were going to click and connect. And, you know, after the tour, I was just in Florida with him writing music like three weeks ago. Like we were writing Slaughter and things like that. So it, it just goes a long way. The connections are huge. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that last point up too about like you need to, I think I read it in a book somewhere where it was like you, if you want to be where they are, as much as you want to like fangirl with them, you need to approach them with the mindset that they're like your colleague Mm -hmm. and that like, maybe you're not on the same level level playing field as them right now, but you will be. And so like, you need to walk that walk. We're like, yeah, "Yeah, we're rubbing elbows. Like we're both here doing the same thing and yeah. Treat them on the same playing field as you. It's a pendulum pendulum of like confidence and just balancing that confidence and also realizing where you are. You know what I mean? So the Mm -hmm. being humble and being confident at the same time. And it's such it's a huge thing because that's a huge point. Like you got to recognize nowhere near where you are, but eventually one day I do want to be, you know, yeah. and I recognize that I'm not, but you know, I want to work towards getting there. So yeah, a hundred percent. Just treating them like a human really. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's been some instances where like, you know, maybe we'll get like backstage access to a show and then like, we'll have like some friends or someone come with us. And I feel like sometimes we have to like give them that sort of backstage etiquette lesson <laughs> it's like do not be going up to the artist and fangirling and asking for pictures backstage like please don't do that that's cringe <laughs> i don't know about you guys but it happens sometimes. <laughs> but some people that's just that's just what they want to do you know you can't you can't flaunt them for it but i i mean yeah it it I, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's like, yeah. well, you can read the, how they're behaving read in the, the moment room. too. Like if they want to the take room. photo, like if they're happy and taking photos and stuff, yeah. But if they're like on their computer trying to prep, like yeah, don't, don't tap them on the shoulder, be like, hey, stop, real quick. Like, hey, like, yo, go listen yeah. to my song. Yeah. Oh my, that's like the worst when you're at a show and they're like, can I just play this for you? Like, and they like I try to be your- nice. <laughs> Some dude tried to show me a song on his phone at a show one time. I was like, listen, no. But oh. it's not because I don't want to hear it. It's because I want to hear it properly. And I want to give, like, you worked hard on it. So I want to listen to it right. So I was like, just yeah. hit me up. Like, here's you know, my information. Send it to me and I'll listen to it at home. That way I can actually yeah. hear it. I heard it on the plane. I hit him back. You know what I mean? So. But yeah, there's a way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We did go off on a tangent there. Oops. Oh, man. We're on a tangent. We only got a couple more. We'll do like two yeah. more of these. Cool. So there was one that I actually wanted to ask. Where is it? Oh, Jay, Jay Dency, <laughs> how do you start off songs? Do you have an idea in your head or do you just mess around in DAW? Um, I'll usually either play some guitar or I'll just, whatever's in my head, if I got an idea, whether it's a drum beat or a melody or something, I'll put it down. Uh, lately, um, I started doing like power hours where I'll literally just open the DAW and I have one hour to finish an, finish an idea. Um, and then if it clicks awesome, if it doesn't, you know, whatever. And then what I'll do sometimes, like usually like the earlier in the week or whenever I'm like, okay, I have ideas and stuff. I'll just go back to them, listen to them and whatever sparks the inspiration, I'll just keep moving on from there. Um, but it could also change too. I mean, sometimes I have lyrics in my head that I want to write and then I'll just write everything around that. Sometimes like bite back that all came from the drop. I did the drop first and then everything else came around it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some songs, it's like literally a drum beat and that the, everything else develops from there. So it, it just don't fight your gut. Whatever your gut's telling you to do, do that. And just follow that. Mm-hmm. That's true like for that. life in general. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> your gut is right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally, like when it comes to important decisions, I always trust my gut, not like what my heart is telling me because my heart might be telling me something different, yeah. like the opposite of what my gut is telling me. And mm-hmm. I always trust my gut. Yeah. Yeah. And I would also tell producers too, don't be afraid to do something that's not dubstep. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many days where I don't do a dub. Like there's been weeks at a time where I don't, I don't, I don't do any dub. I'm doing something completely different, something that's not even relative to the project, but my gut's telling me to write it. So I write it and it feels good. I feel like I'm actually doing something with my talent or what, you know, what I can do. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, just working the muscles, you know? 
I feel like that helps get you out of writer's block sometimes. Absolutely. You know, like if Absolutely. you're stuck, if you're writing dubstep songs 50 weeks of the year mm-hmm. and you're sick of writing dubstep, just write yep. house or write D&B or whatever. hundred percent. A hundred percent. And it's much more fulfilling too. Yeah. You're not fighting it, you know. And you don't have to commit to that forever. It's just like yeah. a short term thing in the moment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, this is our last submitted question. This is from Truth King Lion 369. He's one of our favorite pit vipers out there. He's Sweet. always in the middle of the pit. That name He's, sounds mad familiar. Yeah. You probably know him from Insta. Okay. Um, I probably he, do. Yeah, he's always getting us like super crazy videos from the middle of the pits. <laughs> he was at Thunderdome, so we did a lot of collab posts with him on Instagram. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so he's asking, "Where's the biggest mosh pit that you've had during one of your sets?" Not Lost Lands, because we all know that one was fucking sick. Oh shit. Um. Honestly, I'm gonna give it to Denver. Yeah, I'll give it to Denver. Ooh, um, base it, capital, it, baby. You hear that, Montreal? Yeah. Dude, I mean, <laughs> mission, mission was insane. Um, even when I played Ogden, that shit was insane. Like, it, you guys are just a very physical crowd. Y'all like the move. Y'all like the groove, which is sick. And it's cool because some cities you go to, some people just like to enjoy, so they stand still. But they, it's not that they're not enjoying it. They're just kind of witnessing it. But Denver is such a crowd where it's like they're in it, they're moving, they're going crazy. It's awesome. Um, and I'm also going to have to give a shout out to Thunderdome because when we did that back to back, literally Morte tapped my shoulder. He's like, yo, look. And I saw like four pits going on at the same time. <laughs> and I, I don't want to say Thunderdome because that's a special event. I, You know, Denver as a whole has always consistently done it. But yeah, I, I can't knock saying that Dun- uh, Thunderdome had some crazy fucking pits. Mm-hmm. Like it was fun as shit. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think, well, we posted a video from the Bad News Bears set inside the pits. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that one. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I reposted that on my story. I think I did. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, it's funny that you said Denver because Truth King Lion, the guy who asked the question, I'm Denver. sure he was in those pits that you just mentioned. Yep. He's here. So. Yeah. 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 No. And Ninja. Got to give it to Ninja, Ninja too, man. Yeah. I met Ninja at the Mission Ballroom show. He, like, pulled yeah. out. I was like, what's up, dude? He's like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, man. I fucking know who you are. I love it. I love how they, like, patrol the pits and, like, rally everyone up and, like, yeah. make sure that, like, it's a good community in there. Yeah. The drop We're kicks and all. everything. It's mm-hmm. hilarious. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking mm-hmm. drop kicks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love that. Got to give it to them. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm sure you remember this. We had What's a lightning up? round last time, I think. Let's do it. So mm-hmm. quick I mean, answers. You know how what it you goes. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Answers should be a lot quicker than the submitted questions. <laughs> okay. You got it. <laughs> All right. So where is the real base capital of the world? Montreal. Excuse Sorry. me. How oh, dare world. you? If you say All the right. country, All country right, Denver close. world. 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 We're ending nah, the podcast here. you can't All be right, mad at leave me. Zoom chat. No. Go look at those fucking videos, man. They were loud as shit. You can't tell me that didn't give that God goosebumps. All right, next. <laughs> next. Okay, yeah, we're not talking about that question anymore. Yep, no comment. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what is the strangest venue you've ever performed at? This one. Um, strangest venue... I can't think of the name in my head, but there was one venue that um, really tripped me out. Like it just felt like a sh- oh, Bluestone. I'll give Bluestone mm. that. The first time I went to Bluestone, I was like, "This is literally just a church turned venue," and it threw me the fuck off. It's one of my favorite places to play now. I- That's the one you mentioned. Layla was playing at years ago. Uh, no, Depot. She played at this small oh. spot, Depot, Baltimore. Okay. Um, yeah, is this you one guys in Ohio? have never been to Depot. Yeah, that one's Ohio. Yeah, okay. yeah. Bluestone's gotcha. in Ohio. Yeah, I just I was just there like uh, for a Temple of Base. Um, Space Lysis was there and Dion Timmer. But yeah, I mean, it's come to a point where when I pull up, I'm like, yeah, I love this place. It's awesome. The people are fun. Everything's great. Yeah. Sick. Um, so what is one country you want to play in? <sighs> I want to, well, my answer would have been Belgium, but I'm playing there, so it's like, I got to be creative now. Um, you know, it's not a country, but one of my bucket lists, I want to play in the Alps. I want to mm-hmm. do a set in the Alps. I want to do an outdoor set in the Alps. I want my wife skiing and I want to fucking DJ. I, cool. I seriously Dude. want to do that shit. Tomorrowland winter. Oh, God, that'd be if so they sick. if they ever book dubstep there, which they should, I feel like. So I feel like sick. France mm-hmm. in general has a big dubstep scene. 
even if they're like, you have to play drum and bass, I'll be like, fine, I'll give you drum and bass. I don't care. I just want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's one I would love to go to tomorrow at winter. Oh, amazing. Just go skiing and then ski into like the stage area and just yeah. hang out. Yeah. That'd be fun. That'd be so much fun. That's a bucket list for sure. What is the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you on stage? Oh, uh, so I'm not like super big, but I'm big enough. And it's happened to me a few times at this point. It happened at Thunderdome. We'll literally, it's mainly a B, B2Bs too, because the stage is kind of like everything's tight. We'll be jumping and then my fucking belly will press the stop button on the cues. And then the music stops. And the first time it happened, I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Thunderdome, it happened. And I was like, ah, fuck it. And I just pressed play. Like, didn't even say anything. Aww, I was like, whatever. That's and hilarious. Like, but like, I just laugh about it at this point. I'm like, all right, whatever, man. Just go to the gym when you get back home, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a funny thing. It gives a character to your sets. I've gotten so comfortable with fuck ups on stage. I really uh-huh. have. Um, like at this point, if something goes south or something messes up, I just you know just talk to the crowd they love it mm-hmm. they have a good time so it is what it is you know <laughs> it helps that you're comfortable on the mic yeah. i feel like not a lot of artists are comfortable on the mic yeah i don't i don't really get get mad or nervous or upset about fuck ups anymore i'm just like it happens it's a part of the it's a part of the game you know mm-hmm. yeah um <laughs> we were at countdown and dead mouse he was fucked up on stage and he like <laughs> fucked up something like the music stopped playing and he was like or maybe he looped the song again or something i don't know but basically yeah. he fucked up the drop like it was building yeah. up and building up and then there was no drop it just was the same <laughs> thing over and he's like sorry that was me i fucked up Let's yeah. Try this again. <laughs> yeah i like it when that happens though I've, I've accidentally played the same song twice in a row during a back-to-back on the thrones of blood tour and fucking of course keaton gets on the mic he's like if it's nice play it twice yes <laughs> okay that's the recovery then yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love that. Um, so who are some upcoming artists you think deserve more recognition? Really want to, I want to shout out to the guys that are like really, I don't know if Skeletor, is he, is he still considered pretty small? I feel like he's getting a lot of hype. Skeletor is big on my list. I fucking love everything he does. He's such a cool dude. Um, love his music and his vision. Um, Navert Skirt. Homie's Navert always killing skirt. it. Navert Skirt. Anti-hero. We're going to meet in a bird skirt in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so jealous. I wish. Oh, um, I know anti-hero is growing right now, but he's still one of those people where I'm like, if as long as he just keeps going, I know he's got something there. I really fuck with him heavy. He was such a nice guy to talk to in Florida when we were doing the afters at the FK last year. Yes. Um, Never forget Pandora yeah. afters. Pandora. If you missed oh, it, man. you missed out. Oh, I can't believe I don't even know how I survived that. Was so that much but fun. yeah, it was fun. That crowd, it was really fun. dude. Yeah, you closed it out. It was what was it was like, four a.m. Oh my god, four a.m. Yeah, and they're still going hard. Yeah. I was like, this is nuts. I was so I wasn't nervous, but I was just like, there's no fucking way y'all are still gonna be going hard at four a.m. Like I'm yeah. exhausted. No, and lo and behold, fucking lights are going. The lights are on, and they're still fucking raging. Um, those are like three heads on the top, on the top of my mind that like, are definitely like, I'm looking out for and paying attention to I'm like, what are y'all doing? Um, I've been coming across a lot of new artists. I can't recall on top of my head cause I'm still getting familiar with them, but there is something to be said that there is a really cool wave of new producers right now. A lot of yes. out of the box thinkers, a lot of people that know what works, but are doing it with their own flair um mike shift is such a dope example mm-hmm. like i know he's been playing lost lines and things like that but he's he's another guy where i'm just like just he's just doing it in his own style with no no apologies and i love that that's the shit that gets me hyped yeah shout out to all those guys man y'all are the next generation <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. keeping a watch on all of them and yeah. we are definitely gonna arrest Navert skirt at EDC oh, Mexico. Please mm-hmm. do. And you tell him you tell him that mm-hmm. I if I was there, I'd be with y'all arresting him. Okay. Yes. <laughs> this one's from Sam. <laughs> yes. So excited. Oh my God. I'm so happy for him. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We have our last question. Cool. Are you ready? Let's do it. Fuck Mary Kill. Fucking Alien Mary. Park, Resurrect, Perry Wayne. All right, I'd marry Brian for sure. Yeah, he's got a ring on his finger. Um, <laughs> well, um, I'd, ki- Alana, I'd kill Perry. Alana, you better watch out. Yeah, Alana better watch out, yo. Yeah, mm-hmm. Brian and I, yeah, Brian, 
say I do, dog. Um, I would kill I would kill Perry because my boy's got the enterprise, so he'll be straight. Mm. The city will come after me, so he'll get his revenge. And uh I'd fuck Alien Park. Yeah, I got him. Aliens, <laughs> why not? Let's run it. All right, you gotta take the next flight to Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet. <laughs> Well, we got the FBI jet waiting for you. It'll oh whip you down there. <laughs> it's, it's under maintenance right now. You know, it's just it's on back order. So. It's on back order. Well, like, f- like five years from now, y'all are going to yeah. pull up with the private jet and be like, you thought I was kidding. No, literally. <laughs> that's the power of manifestation. Like Absolutely. people think that these memes that I make are fake when I put our logo on a private jet. Like that shit is not fake. That's going to happen. Go have a one day. Absolutely. Like, yeah. thought. And I'm gonna hit y'all up and be like, "Yo, yeah. <laughs> let me take a look." No, well, once once we all go to Tomorrowland and do a stage takeover, Dubstep Let's BI stage that. takeover, mm-hmm. it's over. It's game Let's over. Let's we're all we're all taking it. the private jet to. I Tomorrowland. see it. I believe it. Yeah. I see it, and I believe it. Yo, y'all have a lot of supporters, man. A lot of the homies I talk to, they all love you. They all love what y'all are doing. Um, seriously, like I oh. I see it. I believe it. Thank Likewise, you. back at you, dude. Let's Thank keep this you. up, man. You never know where we'll be in a year. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. God, yeah. we barely talked a year ago and look how far we've both gotten. It's insane. It's we should do this insane. every year. I'm down. Be like, hey, yeah. little, little Crazy. revolve around the sun, uh-huh. whatever. Here we go. Cheers. Just yeah. catch up <laughs> episode every year. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Well, thank you so much for being on our episode again. It was thank so you for having me. No, no, thank y'all for having me. Seriously, I appreciate it. Um, it means a lot, especially this being a self-release. Um, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to the guys that are on the EP, uh, especially for the tour and everything. So thank you, ladies, so much for having me on. Seriously. You're very welcome. 